This video shows you how to clean up Windows. This worked all the way from Windows 7 to today in Windows 11. All these tools I'm gonna show you are built into Windows. You don't need to go download anything and we're just gonna be cleaning up about a, uh, about a year old, a little over a year old PC that has around 200 or so processes, I think, running in the background. I've mainly just gamed on this system, so that's what this is kind of cleaning up. And obviously, you might be in a worse position, that's okay, but I wanna show you where everything hides in Windows, where uh, programs go to basically make your experience laggy and just not very good. So let's fix that right now. Uh, first things first, let's check your startup items. A lot of people use different tools out there. I caution against that. I think you should learn uh, the tools in the actual operating system. So first we're gonna check the shell startup and from shell startup here, you can see I'm launching these three things. I have a special hotkey command to basically press Alt F4 for me so I can do that to quit out. But we'll, we'll launch back in. Um, and uh, some other different things. ShareX I use for screenshots on this machine and then a Synology Drive client to kind of sync some files to it as well. So that's what I have. All those, I know what they are. If you see something in here you don't know what it is, go ahead and delete it. You're not removing the program. All you're doing is preventing it from starting up. Now, the shell startup is only the user startup. We're gonna move on to the common startup, which is shell common startup. The common startup is basically every user on here. Sometimes programs hide in the common startup. Obviously, nothing's here. I pretty much like to keep all mine in the startup if I can, because no one else uses this machine, but also a good spot to check. Next up, we're gonna check the registry. So if we go into regedit, now what I like to do with registry is first explain a couple things. Current user is your current user. Local machine is pretty much applies to all the users on your machine, much like we just did startup and common startup. We go into current user, we're gonna come down into software, uh, and then come into Microsoft, uh, come over, and usually you go down to Windows, and then current version, and then run. And here is my run command. So we're actually got a couple processes here. We have an LBRY client, that's actually a YouTube alternative, but I don't really even use that anymore, so I'm gonna just delete that. Uh, we have OpenVPN GUI. I do connect to a couple client sites using OpenVPN. RoboForum, that's what I use for my password management. A Reddit wallpaper changer. You know what, I don't really use that anymore. We can delete that. And then we have Steam starting on startup. All these things are fine. Uh, depends on what you are. Since this is a game machine, I'm fine with Steam starting on startup, but some people don't like to launch their game startups if they're not always in there. So that's current user. Now we just do the same thing in local machine. So again, software, come into Microsoft. From Windows, current version, and then from current version, you just kind of scroll down to run, and there's run. This is all the users, this is what's starting. So we have a couple different things like FLX, HCLM. Uh, we can take a peek at what that is. I don't even know what that file is, which is kind of interesting. So let's uh, open that up and see what this file is. I'm, I'm curious now. Here it is, and we're just gonna hit properties to this. See where this is, Tray Application Frisco Logic. It's actually a USB 3 host driver. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and disable this uh, and see what happens. I couldn't imagine USB 3 relying on an executable to work, uh, so I'm gonna just get rid of that. Logitech Options, this is for a lot of the Logitech stuff out there. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Same with Logitech Download Assistant. I don't want it constantly reminding me to download whatever Logitech has going on. Next up is Mini Tool Partition Wizard. This one, look at this, it's an update checker. Do I really want my Partition Wizard to constantly be checking for updates? That seems kind of unnecessary, so we're gonna actually get rid of that. And then we have this, which is Realtek Audio. Uh, I do need this. <laughs> That's our audio. I might maybe not need it, but that utility is nice to have. Uh, I don't think it'll break anything in your audio if you don't want it to. Uh, 
you just can't like launch the utility right out of the box. So sometimes they have like a secondary utility down here you can use. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and delete it just because this is a cleanup video. Uh, however, we could always add this back in if we needed. So now that we've got that, I am gonna leave this VNC control because this is like my game box. I don't actually have a monitor or anything hooked up to it. Uh, and if you're interested about that, I'll link up here to another video. We've gone through the registry, done users and local machine there. Where else does it hide on startup? It's a good question. Uh, if you hold control shift and press escape, you can actually kind of look at your startup too. This kind of consolidates a little bit of it and see what we have. We have teams starting up. Let's disable that. We have just some random update service. We're going to go ahead and disable that. And we're going to just see if there's anything else in here. Discord. I mean, you could technically get rid of that. Uh, I'm probably just going to go ahead and disable and remove Discord as I don't really use it on this system anymore. Uh, and that's good. So that's another spot. But oh, wait, we're not done yet. There's still more stuff for startup things to hide. That's why like a tool doesn't just grab this all. I mean, some of them try to grab some of it, but they just never can get all of it. Uh, so we're going to go into what's called Task Scheduler. And from Task Scheduler, we're going to just kind of go to the library. What's what all's going on here? What what other things do we have happening? Oh, uh, quite a bit. So we have a couple robo form stuff. That's the password manager. We have some crash reports going on. And what you can do here instead of deleting these, we can just go disable. I don't care about crash reports going back. Uh, do we want Nvidia to do an update or daily login? Probably not. Let's disable that as well. Uh, node launcher. These self update services and stuff. I'm kind of like, no, I don't want you doing this. And the reason why I don't just delete these is a lot of times when you launch into these tools, they check to see if the task still exists. And if it doesn't, it'll recreate it, which will re-enable it. However, if they see the task exists, it won't try to recreate it. So a lot of times this will just stay disabled. They just will stop checking for updates. Uh, here we got, got some old Edge stuff. You're never going to get rid of Edge. It's just one of those things. I've, I've showed people how to uninstall it, but as soon as you do an update on your system, Microsoft's going to reinstall that every single time. And then Brave, I do use a lot, and I do want that updating. Uh, having said all that, uh, everything else looks pretty good, but I mean, there's so much that Windows uses Task Scheduler for. I don't want you to get too far into the weeds here as you could, you know, cause some bad side effects. I just kind of want to show a couple things in Task Scheduler. and You should definitely check this root of uh, Task Scheduler to make sure uh, you know what, what is happening in the background. So all these tasks do run uh, periodically through the day. Now with that done, we are uh, looking a little bit better. We, we've controlled our startup. Now we need to dive into the actual machine itself and start cleaning up some programs. So here I type app whiz.cpl. This brings me the old uninstall from uh, Windows 7 era. Even in Windows 11 and stuff, I still like this one a little bit better just because I can go through and just see right out and be like, okay, let me go through and see if there's anything in here. I need to get rid of. I probably don't need that anymore. It was from a class I took. Uh, I don't really do Awaken PoE trade anymore. And if I did, I need to probably update this because it's been many years since I did it. Cap frame analysis tool. I tried this a little bit. I didn't really like it. So I'm going to go ahead and uninstall that. Chia block uh, chain. I actually had a little stint where I was uh, doing some plot farming on some hard drives I had. But obviously, I don't use that anymore. So we're going to get rid of that. Uh, Discord, I launch on a different machine now, so I can remove it as well. Now, Java updates is really kind of, this is a personal preference, but if you're going to do, if you see multiple Java instances, uninstall the old version of Java. Java is one thing you just don't want to do. Uh, and, and honestly, since I know that Log4j came out, which is a Java logger, I'm going to go ahead and just uninstall this because the last update I have here is from 1022. And since that exploit just happened uh, last week, uh, since there's probably going to be another update for Java. So whatever's relying on Java right now, I want it to just hard fail. <laughs> so I'm going to remove Java because if you're not on the latest version of Java, this could be causing more harm than good. And any program that have has this as a dependency and it needs it to run, uh, I'd much rather go out and get a newer version of Java that has been updated since uh, the log4j exploit because that was a 10 out of 10, a pretty severe exploit. Then we got old edge. We'll just go ahead, uninstall web view runtime. 
and we can't really uninstall that here. I have gone over how to, but it's like, eh, it doesn't work very great. We're gonna remove some health tools. Usually those health tools are used to update to Windows 11, uh, which can be problematic. Don't recommend updating to Windows 11 just yet, uh, but if you really like the aesthetic, go ahead, it's fine. It's not, nothing's wrong with Windows 11. Uh, I just prefer Windows 10 just yet for my game stream PC. Although I do have Windows 11 elsewhere. And if you are on Windows 11, this also all works the same. And basically what you do is you just keep going through each one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, my run through here, see if there's anything that I see that uh, just can be removed, or maybe I was using it for a project. I'm gonna go ahead and remove a lot of this uh, because I can always reinstall it. Uh, that's the thing with most of this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead, finish running through all these. If I see anything else, I'll uh, go ahead and clean it up and we're gonna go ahead and do a reboot. But I want you to, yours is gonna look different than mine. I just kinda wanna go through a couple of these just so you get a good feel for removing programs. It's important to actually kinda clean this up. All right, with everything cleaned up out of here, uh, I think we'll probably move on. One other thing I, you can do is come into Windows Features. Sometimes people install like a whole bunch of different feature sets and you could actually kind of clean up more and kind of minimize your Windows install by removing some things here. Uh, personally, most of this stuff I will use. Uh, things I caution against is like SMB 1.0 support that's extremely insecure, so don't enable that. Uh, and most of this other stuff I actually do use as I'm constantly in PowerShell and subsystem for Linux. Most users won't use those things though, so you could safely remove them. Uh, so we, this is finished. There's also a lot of telemetry and other things in the background. I've used different tools. I've done a bunch of videos over my toolkit. Usually I finish this up with a toolkit launch and kind of clean some stuff up. But before I do that, I wanna actually check for applications, actual Microsoft Store applications. That's kind of a fun one. So usually from your start menu, whether you're on Windows 11, Windows 10, this is just more applies to you. If you're on an older version of Windows, uh, obviously you're not gonna have this because Microsoft Store uh, typically can install some weird stuff. So like if you didn't want, let's say calculator, you can uninstall the calculator and there's some actual applications that don't make it into add and remove programs like dynamic theme. I'm not gonna really use that. Let's go ahead and uninstall it. Usually if you come into library, go sort by installed, you can kind of see what other apps are installed here. Like app installer, that's actually Winget, which I do use to install applications. I just make sure this doesn't get bloated up with a whole bunch of garbage. Uh, almost everything in here I do use, but be careful when installing from the Microsoft Store as there are some uh, malicious apps in it. Uh, it's not well curated and uh, sometimes this can get a little unwieldy for those that actually do use it. I don't particularly like to use it. The only times I really do use it for like Linux subsystem for Windows. Uh, my password manager sometimes has some tie-ins. Uh, Bedrock Minecraft is another good use case for it. Some people use Forza and other games that are in here. Uh, so those are the kind of the big things with this. Uh, I'll go ahead and update the store, why not? Uh, and kind of just keep this lean. This is another spot where bloat can happen. And if we just type dbloat windows into Google, usually I'm the first search term here for, for this, uh, but typically just come into here. And this is just a GitHub script. I've done this before. You don't necessarily have to do this. Uh, if you're interested in a further explanation, I do have a video. I'll do a quick walkthrough here though. And these are all just programs that I use on the daily. So if there's something in here that I wanted to install, I just click the button and it installs the program for me. However, most times I just hit essential tweaks and that just kind of does the norm for me. I usually run this after every feature update that happens on my system as Windows will re-enable telemetry. It'll re-enable a lot of Microsoft Edge stuff. There's a lot of really uh, fine tuning that happens with this essential tweaks. It helps with services and a lot of other things, but very quick to run, it's already finished. Uh, you can do other things, like sometimes I like to show all my tray icons down here, which I've done. Uh, so usually I do that, but some most people don't like to see all the tray icons, so they'll do the standard grouping. And in Windows 11, I believe you have to group them up. I don't think you can show all the icons. Uh, and then I usually uh, leave pretty much everything else alone. A lot of people m start clicking everything. Don't do that. You're gonna end up breaking certain aspects of Windows, such as disabling background apps typically has an adverse effect on anything installed through the Microsoft Store. 
uh, disabling OneDrive and it'll delete all your OneDrive files and get rid of OneDrive. Uh, disabling Cortana and search, it'll disable Cortana and all of the search. So anytime you come into here and you go to search something, it's just not gonna search for anything. It's not gonna find anything because you've disabled search. Uh, so those are the, kind of like the basic things that I usually do in here. And then usually I just click security updates to just say, hey, don't give me the latest and greatest feature update. Usually that causes problems and usually you get some bad updates in there. It only grabs security updates, which is good. So with that done, I can go ahead and reboot. Uh, we'll check our last bit on what our process count is through performance here. We're still hovering in the 200 process range. We'll go ahead and give this a reboot and then log back in. So here we go. So actually on startup here, I have a couple different things happening uh, with like Steam launching. I usually launch Wallpaper Engine that gives me this nice background. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to leave this on. This is actually was shut down when I first started, but let's see what the task count is now with uh, some of this cleanup happening. Let's go to performance and we dropped almost 70 processes. That's insane. And if let's, let's go ahead and just for for giggles quit out of that and see if it drops it drops a couple processes and gets down a little bit further and we could even quit out like steam and some other things that are running in the background here but that's a pretty massive improvement we just slimmed down our memory footprint probably by about a gig i think i didn't actually look at the uh total footprint but also the running processes is considerably less we also prevented a lot of those processes from running at a scheduled time by uh, affecting task scheduler this is going to give you a much cleaner and, and less laggy windows experience so that's it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and uh, let me know thought, how you thought of this as uh, it, it's something I ran into my day job just the other day. And I was like, ah, oh, people probably want to know how to clean up windows without downloading a bunch of crap uh, from the internet because those cleanup tools a lot of times don't really do that much. Uh, so with that, I'll see you in the next one.